Good evening, Westerville Church. It's Reverend Dan coming to you with our evening Vesper service. The Vesper service is uploaded as a PDF there on our Facebook page if you want to click on it or if you've downloaded it already and you have it there. I invite you to join along with me in this evening prayer service. And as we do, let us take a few moments to silence all that is within us. Whether there's been chaos today or whether there's been noise around the neighborhood or the workplace, let's take a few moments to breathe before God and to settle our hearts as we enter into this time of evening prayer, this Vesper service. Would you take a few moments of silence with me? Join me now in the service of light, the opening sentences of the Vesper service. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. For our evening hymn, I'd like to sing a a song from an evening prayer service that has been set to music. It's called Holden Evening Prayer by a composer named Marty Haugen. It has one of the most beautiful melodies that I've ever come across, and this is the opening hymn of that evening prayer service. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, of the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, Love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. Now let us join our voices in the evening collect, the opening prayer of the Vesper service. Let us pray. We praise you and thank you, O God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ, you created the whole world. Through Christ, you preserve it. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of our minds and bodies. Keep us now in Christ. Grant us a peaceful evening, a night free from sin, and bring us at last to eternal life. Through Christ and in the Holy Spirit, we offer you all glory, honor, and worship, now and forever. Amen. And as we come to a time of hearing what the psalmist says to the church this evening, I invite you to speak with, miss, speak with me this invitatory, which invites you and I together to hear the psalm this evening. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, hasten to help us. Glory to you, O Trinity, most holy and blessed one God, now and forever. Amen. Our evening psalm tonight is Psalm 15. Hear now what the psalmist says to the church. O Lord, who may abide in your tent?
who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and who do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent, those who do these things shall never be moved. Let us conclude this time of hearing psalm by saying, Glory to you, O Trinity, most holy and blessed, one God, now and forever. Amen. Evening scripture appointed today by a daily lectionary is from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Jesus has fed the multitudes, and he's gone on a long discourse of talking to those who gather that day about what the bread of life is, the bread of heaven, the bread he brings, the nourishment, the soul nourishment that he brings. And after all of this is said and done, and people are amazed at what this is, he's there with uh, a bunch of people who have been following, including his 12. And he says this to them about this bread of heaven, this bread of life that is his flesh and his blood. He says, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe and who were the ones who would betray him. And he said, For this reason, I told you that no one can come to me unless granted by God the Almighty. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. I know these are difficult times and many question whether God is with us, whether the Spirit is still among us. I was reminded reading an editorial in a magazine just this morning about how the most rudiment rudimentary prayer there is for us as Christians is come Holy Spirit. What could be more easy to pray than come Holy Spirit, come in the midst of us, even during these times? And some would question that. Some would question, is the Spirit here? Is God with us? And perhaps it's just in these times, in these disheartening times, that the Spirit is moving, is helping us, is seeing us through because the Spirit proceeds from God the Creator, Christ the Redeemer, who reminds us, as we heard Simon Peter said, brings the words of eternal life. Who can we turn to? Jesus is the one to turn to, the one who brings the words of eternal life, the words of comfort and guidance, sometimes challenge. But he is the one that brings the words of eternal life and who is the embodiment of the Holy One. So rest assured this evening, as you hear the scripture, that we too can say with one voice, Lord, whom can we go to? For you do have the words of eternal life. I invite you now into a few moments of silence to ponder these, ponder the words of the psalmist, ponder what's upon your heart, in these moments. Let us be in silence. Amen.
Now we come to a time where we sing with the church, the great evening canticle, the piece of scripture set to music. And it's been set to music by various people down through history. And even Marty Haugen in this service I just sang from, Holden Evening Prayer, makes a version of his own out of the Magnificat. And I hope you indulge me and let me sing it for you tonight, this musical setting of Mary's famous words from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55 where she proclaims the greatness of God. Hear now the Magnificat. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One. Strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones, and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things, and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one, strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Now we come to a time to be in prayer for our needs, the needs of our loved ones, our family, our friends, our world. There'll be several categories here that I'm going to speak of. If you have a prayer to lift in one of those categories, please feel free to do so or just any prayer that's upon your heart tonight, lift that to God. Let us be in this time of prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Together in silence, let us pray for the people of our congregation. Let us pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. Together in silence, let us pray for the concerns of our local communities. Let us pray for the world, its people, and its leaders. Together and in silence, let us pray for the Church Universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission.
And let us pray for all those who have gone before us, that great cloud of witnesses that now resides on a different shore and in a greater light, that communion of saints. And now we gather all these prayers up in that one great prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for our closing hymn, not necessarily a closing hymn or an evening hymn, but, but definitely a closing hymn for our time together. A couple of verses of God be with you. God be with you till we meet again. By good counsel, God uphold you. With a shepherd's care enfold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again, when life's perils thick confound you. Put unfailing arms around you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you, till we meet again. And let us close our service together. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be well, be safe.